and welcome to another segment of Interviews That Matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment, we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations, and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Friends, we need to bring candidates running for offices within the county and the state at the state level. Today's guest is such guest who can help us in that journey. His name is Richard Schaefer and he is the chairman of Suffolk County Democratic Committee and also the supervisor for Town of Babylon. Let's go and meet Richard Schaefer. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the show. I really appreciate you taking time to thank, come in. Thank here. you very much, Raj. Appreciate you having me today. Now, you know, um, typical is like 24 hours a day. We all have 24 hours a day. And what I heard is you have like 30 hours a day. You I, wear so many hats. I have a special arrangement uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> to add a couple of extra hours. Yeah, I, I've, um, 2012 has certainly been a very busy year for me. Right. Um, one, I've been serving as the chairman of the Suffolk County Democratic Committee since September of 2000. Right. And uh, earlier this year, in January, the, uh, I was honored to have the Babylon Town Board right. appoint me right. to fill in for right. Steve Ballone. Steve Ballone was elected county executive right. last November. Mm -hmm. He took office in January, mm -hmm. and so he had to resign as town supervisor. And one of the things that was interesting was I had served as town supervisor in Babylon right. from uh, November of 1992 mm -hmm. through the end of 2001, right after 9-11, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And when he left, uh, he came to me and, s and asked me, would you be interested in filling in for me? Uh, mm -hmm. And I thought about it. Uh, I loved the job when I did it the first time. Mm -hmm. And so the town board appointed me. So now I'm, I'm, I'm balancing both positions and, like you said, adding a couple of extra hours. Uh, the sleep portion has diminished. <laughs> um, but uh, it's truly things I enjoy to do, uh, I enjoy doing. and. Um, uh, especially being town supervisor was a job I always loved. Well, see, it's like that, you know, one is the first hat is the Suffolk County Chairman, Chairman of Suffolk County yes. Com Democratic Committee. Second hat you wear is the town of uh, Babylon Supervisor. Yes. Third hat is you're an attorney. Uh, yes, but, on, I put, but I put that on hold. Oh, you put that on hold. Yeah, and, while. And, and then your personal life. Yeah, and then you have personal life, too. Yeah. So, like, you, I mean, you're, how do you balance all this? You know, personal well, life, it, does it get affected or what? Oh, absolutely. Personal life is scaled back tremendously while yeah. you're doing that. But <laughs> I, I've always looked at uh, public service as a commitment that you make um, to serve the community. And so, um, mm -hmm. and that's what's been most important to me all through my life. Mm -hmm. I was elected mm -hmm. to the county legislature mm -hmm. when I was 22. Right. Um, with Pat Halpin, who was our county executive ah, at that time. Okay. Back in 1987. Interesting. Um, finishing up law school, so I served as a county legislator doing that job, and then I was elected to the uh, Town of Babylon Supervisor's position in November of 92. Mm -hmm. When I was 29, I was sworn in you on my 29th birthday, wow. and uh, was the youngest person to be sworn in as Babylon Town Supervisor in the town's history. Uh, served there for nine years, so I've always had a commitment to public service, and I know that making that commitment mm -hmm. does cut into your personal uh, time right. uh, for what you do. But one of the things that I found even coming back as town supervisor is there's a lot of events and local things that go on that right. I would participate in even if I wasn't an elected official. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, that's why I enjoy doing the job that I do. Right, and you are a you know, dedicated public uh, you know, servant. Yeah, well, you do well, a lot of public service. I always tell anybody who's looking to run for office that if they can't, if they're not going to make a commitment mm -hmm. to, um, mm -hmm. uh, if they want to get into this, it's about public service. And if right. they're not going to make a commitment to make themselves available to the public, mm -hmm. that they shouldn't get into this uh, mm -hmm. business and shouldn't get, shouldn't run for office because. Right. When you run for office, you're making a commitment that you're going to be available to every resident mm -hmm. uh, that you're seeking to serve, right, in right. whether it's a town or a, a legislative district or assembly district. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't make that commitment, meaning mm -hmm. that if you're in King Cullen and somebody right. comes up to you and they have a question or a concern or need your help with something, you're going to have to right. deal with that right. because 
I view being a public servant as being a 24-7, uh, right. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And right. so when residents mm -hmm. need you, mm -hmm. you have to be available. Now, when you mentioned, you know, Pat Halpin, he was the county executive. You know, I remember because I was the vice chairman of the Pat Halpin's uh, uh, coalition of minority businesses at okay. that time. So I served as a vice chairman. I served as a treasurer first, and then I was, you know, appointed as a vice chairman of that whole coalition. Right. And I did serve under his uh, leadership, actually. Yeah, Pat that's Halpin. one of the ways I got my start in all this was through Pat Halpin. Oh, Pat, yeah. oh, okay. Patrick and I have known each other. Mm -hmm. I worked on Tom Downey's campaigns when he was okay. a congressman back in the mm -hmm. um, late 70s, early 80s, uh, through when I went to college at SUNY Albany. So I've known Patrick mm -hmm. for a long time, worked for him mm -hmm. part-time when I came back from college, mm -hmm. uh, when I started going to law school, mm -hmm. and ran for the county legislature when he ran for county executive. So mm -hmm. I've known his work, he's taught me a lot. Uh, and I viewed him as one of my mentors, uh, who've, who've mentored me through this um, through this uh, ride that I've been on wow. in uh, public service. So, what is the difference in '92, like first time you became a supervisor, and now? Well, I have email. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, what I what I found is that my predecessor, Steve Ballone, the county executive, right, yeah. uh, really built in a lot of efficiencies into the operations of right. the town government. So, yeah. when I left in 2001, we were just getting into email and websites and the right, use of right, the right. internet and how you could communicate with residents more efficiently. Right. And so when I've come back almost closing my eyes for 10 years and then coming back into the town hall, even though the building itself hasn't changed, right. Um, right. a lot of the people have and the technology, the use of technology, um, which has been great for me to be able to communicate with residents, uh, be able to get information out to residents right. much right. quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and be able to get responses to things. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of the great things is uh, we've got a tracking system now in place that tracks and, and continues to monitor how quickly we're responding to mm -hmm. complaints or concerns that are called in for various services that the town provides, like through the Public Works Department, through the Public Safety Department, through the Building Department. So I'm much more excited about being there now because of the efficiencies that are built in, and it makes it easier to do mm -hmm. a lot of the things that we have to do in a short period of time. So technology has helped you a lot. Technology has helped yeah. tremendously. Right. Um, I did joke that a lot of things that haven't changed, mm -hmm. uh, I've been out mm -hmm. at a lot of events, fire department mm -hmm. dinners, little league parades, right. boy right. scout and girl scout functions. Right. A lot of the faces are all the same. Right. A little bit older right. looking, maybe <laughs> a couple of gray hairs, including myself. But when I've been out at these events, I just, I've joked see to everybody, I see the same people who've made our community, wow. different hamlets and villages within the town of Babylon, the strong place that it is. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten a big kick because I've said to them, at least I left for 10 years. What's your excuse? And they all laugh <laughs> about that. But what's good is that there's been this continuity and stability in the town, right. which is why I think people look to move there. Mm -hmm. Um, because they're able to enjoy a stable community with all of the amenities that the town of Babylon has to offer. So now, you know, uh, Steve Ballone, when he was a supervisor, he's a very visionary person, and he has really implemented a lot of new initiatives in the mm -hmm. town, including energy. Yes. You know, like he was kind of, he's a pioneer in, in alternative energy. Of the green homes has, uh, green program. Homes and mm -hmm. all that. So, um, I'm, you know, are you going to uh, introduce anything new, or are you going to continue the way? I yeah. mean, is uh, well, one of the one of the reasons why he approached me was because, and 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 he and I grew up on the same street, literally wow. next door to each other oh, in wow. North Babylon okay. on uh, Marcy Street off of Belmont Avenue, and mm -hmm. I grew up on one corner of Marcy and Lewis. He grew up on the other corner, so I've known him <laughs> for a very long time. We know how each other thinks. And one of the things I was excited about as I got to learn a lot mm -hmm. about what he did during the campaign when we ran right. him for county executive, right. some of the things that excited me were that a lot of these projects were just coming to fruition. For mm -hmm. example, the Wine Dance mm -hmm. Rising project, which is a total uh, renovation and creation of a transit-oriented mm -hmm. uh, commercial and residential development centered around the Wine Dance train station, which is going to make over mm -hmm. the look of Wine Dance and really do something that should have been done a long time ago because there's so many good people in the hamlet of Wine Dance right. who've been struggling for so many years that this right. development's going to be the shot in the arm that they need and it's going to 
give an everlasting transformation of the hamlet, which benefits not just the hamlet of Windange, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. entire town of Babylon. Green homes, you mentioned Long Island Green Homes, which Steve has received national and yeah, well, international right. recognition right. for the program that he created is continuing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, al it's allowed a number of residents, in mm -hmm. fact, we've done close to 800 homes at this point mm -hmm. that have been retrofitted mm -hmm. uh, through the Green Homes program, whether they've gotten energy efficient boilers or mm -hmm. uh, insulation or work that's been done on the home to make it more energy efficient. We're just now working with LIPA and Keyspan to get the numbers so we can show just how much um, has been done to uh, affect the carbon footprint, if you would right. say, right. that the town of Babylon is leaving. So we're getting those numbers now so we can show how uh, good the program mm -hmm. has been mm -hmm. and continuing that program, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a number of other things. Steve created the Quality of Life Task Force, which mm -hmm. is a group within the town mm -hmm. that focuses mm -hmm. on uh, serial code violators, people who violate the town mm -hmm. code mm -hmm. and bring down the quality of life. Mm -hmm. And it could be a house on a particular street, a business that isn't following the town code. So the Quality of Life mm -hmm. Task Force is continuing mm -hmm. um, because it's been so successful over the years. And I know that you were the mentor for Steve, I guess, you know, which I know that you are the one who, he learned a lot from you, basically. He learned a lot from me, and as I've told people recently, I've learned so much from him. He mm -hmm. came, mm -hmm. when he came back from, uh, from the Army in right. 1995, right. he came to me looking for a letter of recommendation to go to law school. Oh, okay. And at that time, I said to mm -hmm. him, um, I said, well, what would you think about coming to work for me? I ah. was the town supervisor. Uh -huh. So he thought about it. I said, you can go to law school at night and, and work for me during the day. Mm -hmm. And he thought about it, and he signed up uh, on it. And um, he then started working for me, got elected to the town board in 97. And now as I've watched him grow mm -hmm. and the things that he's done as town supervisor, mm -hmm. I tell everybody that it's almost like big brother, little brother, but actually the little brother's teaching the big brother a lot <laughs> of things that the big brother had no idea about. Yeah. And so I think there's something special about him with his ability to have a vision right. for how things should be. And he can look at something mm -hmm. um, like the Wine Inch Rising Project, right. and he on his own has spent 10 years working with the community to create that vision mm -hmm. and implement it. And we're now at the point where we're going to mm -hmm. see the first phase implemented. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited about how much I've learned from him on that and now am serving as the implementor mm -hmm. of this, uh, of his vision uh, mm -hmm. that we're continuing to work together on. So as I've taught him, and he'll say I've taught him, he's taught me as well. So it's been a great uh, mm -hmm. professional relationship, personal relationship, and I think it's for the betterment of the town that he and I are able to implement our vision for where the town should be, in a town that we grew up in and, and right. care so much about. Mm -hmm. I, we are hoping that he will be also on our show one of these days, and we definitely are looking forward to having him on our show. Yeah, and so. I think you'll enjoy the conversation right. with him because uh, anytime you sit down with him, and, and residents tell me this all right. the time, that the 10 years that they spent with him mm -hmm. has been exciting, and I haven't met a resident who's complained about being able to get access to him, talk to him, and watch what he's implemented in mm -hmm. the town. So I'm sure he'll be excited to come on. Thank you, thank you. Chairman, we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. Sure. Please stay with us. Welcome back. I wanted to ask you, now I'm jumping on this uh, at the chairman of the Suffolk County. The Democratic political County, level. The political level, mm -hmm. right? You have been there for, since 2000. Yes. And you have really had a lot of successes over a period of time. Like Democratic Party has really kind of, you know, expanded their base mm -hmm. from, because mostly it was Republican, whole Suffolk County. Was. Yes. And now you can see the county and many of the towns are Democrats. Uh, who do you, what, credit goes to who? You alone, or, or what is what is credit? Credit goes to everyone who's made themselves part of the Democratic Party. I've always said there's no I in team, mm -hmm. so it's not one particular person that you can point to to say, hey, 
that person is do look I'm, the, I'm, I'm trying to provide the backdrop for what we should do and strategically how we should approach things mm -hmm. but I get input from a whole bunch of people whether they be elected <laughs> officials mm -hmm. town committee people mm -hmm. uh, various community leaders who I seek advice from mm -hmm. um, and ask them how we should approach certain things so and each race, uh, each campaign, I look at mm -hmm. as uh, as as almost like a business plan. You come up with a business plan for mm -hmm. your company, how to be successful, and uh, you rely on a lot of people who either work for you or you count as your confidants who give you advice. Same thing goes for what I do as the Democratic Party chair. And again, it all comes back to remembering where you came from. Mm -hmm. Uh, remembering how to respond to everyday people who don't maybe not participate as much as we do but who are active in the process mm -hmm. um, and remembering to stay true to what you believe in mm -hmm. because people will always pick up if you're not being true to them they'll pick up on that right away right, right, right. the voters are much smarter than people give them credit for mm -hmm. a lot of people say oh the voters aren't paying attention the voters are always paying attention yeah. now it isn't as many voters as we'd like to pay attention because one of the things that we're disappointed in is turnout and turnout in local elections can right. range anywhere between 25 and 35 percent mm -hmm. in presidential years it spikes up to maybe 65 percent mm -hmm. and in governor years it's maybe around 40 to 50 percent so we'd like to have obviously much more turnout um, of voters but I think I think what I what I'd say is that it's a group effort Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And why we've been so successful is I think we've been able to find good candidates who know their turf, who know mm -hmm. the residents in their area that they're running from. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And when they get elected, they follow through on what they say they're going to do and they stay in touch with the people that put them there in the first place. So the demographic has changed, like Democrats, more Democrats? Demographics have definitely changed. Just take for Babylon Town, for example, when, when I was first elected in 1987, right. Republicans held a large majority in the number of registered Republicans to registered Democrats. Right. Now today, 2012, mm -hmm. there are 10,000 more Democrats registered than there are Republicans. Okay. So that has changed over the years, and I think it's a combination of demographics people who've moved into the town, turnover right. in the town, right, right. as well as I think based on the Democratic Party mm -hmm. uh, through various officials has been in charge of the town over that number of years. So I think the work that we've done in the town, the parks improvements mm -hmm. that we've done, the road improvements that we've done, making town government more accessible to people, the types of events that we've made available mm -hmm. to residents. Mm -hmm. I think all of that has residents saying that, yeah, the Democrats who we've elected over the years have done a tremendous job for us and will mm -hmm. continue to elect them until they stop doing that job for us. Okay. And I've always stressed to our people right. who work for us mm -hmm. and who are involved, I've said that could change on a dime. If you right. become arrogant, if you become uh, not mm -hmm. complacent, if you become uh, inaccessible to residents and responding to their concerns, they That's will it. vote you out the next election. So right. you have to work as hard as you were working on day one mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. See, leadership is more important. Like, you know, leaders like you really, that's how people, people do what, you know, leaders. Are setting the tone. Setting the tone. Setting right. the tone. And, and it's funny, people yeah. were laughing because, well, not laughing, but they were, they were saying, right. I'm, I'm, I'm running this November on the ballot for supervisor right. to fill out the one year left on Steve's term. Right. And I've been out knocking on doors, and they say, well, why are you out knocking exactly. on doors? Why would you be doing that? And I said, well, first of all, it's the best way for me to figure out what's going on in the town. Right. I was out last week, and it was 90-something degrees, and the residents would say, what are you doing out here? <laughs> I said, well, because I carve out a specific amount of time that I want to spend going into each different hamlet and village, mm -hmm. talking to people, finding out what's on their minds, and that's the best way I can stay in touch. I don't go by what the polls say or, mm -hmm. or somebody putting a piece of paper for me. I'd rather talk one-on-one -on -one to people. And so I set that tone, and I tell people that if I'm asking people who work for me to do that, I have to do that. You exactly. lead by example, lead by exactly. just as you do in your company here. Right, that's true, right, yeah. Well, that's, that's a great thing because you cannot, it's not done until it's done. Exactly. You know, so you cannot leave any stone unturned. And you, you never, never take, take anything for granted. Take it yep. for granted anything, right? Yeah. Now, you know, 
I wanted to ask you that when you select the candidates for various, you know, uh, positions, mm -hmm. right? What do you look for? What is the what do you look for within in the candidate? What what are the characteristics? I mean, you already mentioned that they should be outgoing. They should be a you know, public mm -hmm. person. Apart from them, what other things that they are they they need to have? Well, I think uh, community involvement. They have to show a track record of being involved in various community activities, and it doesn't have to be any specific activity. But right. if they can show that mm -hmm. they've got what I would call a base of support, mm -hmm. uh, and it could be anywhere from a civic uh, religious um, education mm -hmm. background that they can bring to the table that says hey this person is somebody that people respond well to mm -hmm. um, they have to show an ability to raise some money because you need money to get your message out yes. a lot of times campaigns are expensive so it would be good if they could show a base of support where people are willing to come to a fundraiser or hundred dollars a head mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. put some money in the bank so that they can print mailings, palm right. cards, right. get on the radio, get on the TV. So, and particularly the local races, and it, it isn't, I know a lot of times people hear the presidential races, billions of dollars. The local races are, are within manage. If you're gonna run for the town council or the county legislature or the state assembly, you have to be able to raise some money, and the party helps raise some money as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what I spend some time doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, again, personable, being, mm -hmm. making sure that if you're making the commitment to right. do it, that you're going to follow through with the commitment. And this isn't going to be a chore for you, but it's something that you enjoy. Passion. You've got, you got, you got to have a, a little passion in it, yeah. because otherwise it's going to show that you don't right. have it, right. and voters are not going to respond to you. So mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't look at this as a, as a stopping over point. This has right. got to be a commitment that you make. Mm -hmm. So is there like a fixed amount for each position that they, you should be able to, you have to raise it kind of, you have to show? Um, there isn't a chart that says, okay, chart you need X. It's going to be, if you're running in an open seat, you're going to need to spend a lot more money uh, mm -hmm. to get your name out there, to okay. get yourself known. Right. If you're an incumbent, right. maybe you have to raise a little less. So okay. I would say that if I'm starting off for a county legislative race, I would I would ask somebody, they should be able to raise between fifteen and $20,000. Mm -hmm. uh, that would help them jumpstart their campaign mm -hmm. if they're running. Now, do you see any challenges uh you know, finding a candidate? There's always challenges. There's yeah. a, uh, particularly when we're looking at running against a long-time Republican incumbent, mm -hmm. I have a very difficult time getting people interested in, in running a race that right. a lot of times may not be a race that's going to turn out in our favor. Right. It may be from an area that we don't do particularly well in. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of people who are true believers in the Democratic Party, and they will carry the banner for us to make sure that people have a choice right. in the election. So. Mm -hmm. Um, so those races where you've got like an incumbent, um, like John Flanagan, Senator John Flanagan, who represents part of our, he's a longtime Republican incumbent, his father served prior to him. Uh, so we find difficulty uh, fielding a candidate against him. Um, in some town races, sometimes there's a popular town clerk or somebody who everybody knows and it's difficult to get somebody uh, into that race. So. There are times when I've got to ask somebody, please, we need somebody to carry the Democratic banner, as, as the Republicans will have right. against some of our mm -hmm. uh, incumbents as well. Mm -hmm. So what is your target race this year? So the target race is Tim Bishop, Tim Bishop. Uh, Congressman Tim Bishop, who represents right. the first congressional district. It's right. most of Smithtown, uh, all of Brookhaven, and the five East End towns. Mm -hmm. And um, so we are putting everything we have into his race. Okay. Um, he was reelected two years ago in a right. very difficult year for Democrats. In right. fact, he had no business getting reelected, but it was really because of the work that Tim has done as congressman, mm -hmm. uh, protecting the middle class, uh, mm -hmm. delivering for the Suffolk County voters mm -hmm. in terms of bringing projects back uh, at Brookhaven National Laboratory, at SUNY right. Stony Brook, road work projects that he's brought back. Mm -hmm. So he's got a great track record. Mm -hmm of standing up for the middle class and he's running against the same fellow who ran against two years ago, Altschuler, who's made a career out of out of saying he wants to create jobs here in, in the United States but has made a career out of outsourcing uh, jobs which has hurt the local economy and mm -hmm. so you got a clear choice between someone who's been creating jobs here versus someone who's not been creating jobs here and, mm -hmm. and I think that the voters will respond very well to Tim's message once again 
uh, this year mm -hmm. in, in 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Tim enjoys the support of Governor Cuomo and, and various officials from around the county, including the county executive, Steve Ballone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we've got the great campaign apparatus that's going to be able to help deliver our voters to the polls in 2012. So that's your focus race this year? That's our focus race this year. We think it's, very, it's extremely important that Tim Bishop be reelected, uh, to be working with Steve Israel, mm -hmm. uh, who's another one of our Congress right. people. But Tim's race is our focus because, again, we, don't, we can't afford to lose someone like Tim Bishop who really cares about the people in his district, mm -hmm. who's got the track record to mm -hmm. prove it. Mm -hmm. And the, vo the, 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 posi the, the choice is clear between the two of them. And right. uh, again, Al Chiller's made it clear where he's standing. He, he moved here to run for this congressional seat. He doesn't really know much about Suffolk County. He's mm -hmm. doing it for what, what I would term a business decision. Mm -hmm. um, he's made his millions out of outsourcing American jobs uh, out of mm -hmm. our country. And so we want to make sure that we have somebody who's going to be a true believer in the American mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. and who's got a track record of delivering for the voters in his district. Well, we are also sending a request to be him for him, Congressman, to be on our show. So hopefully he'll. Yeah, I'm sure he'll he'll, he'll want to talk to you about right. more in more specific more what specific he's been able to do for the residents of Suffolk right. County and what he would like to do uh, going forward. Right now in Suffolk County, you know, South Asian population has grown tremendously. You know, last ten years, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, census says that it has really like doubled or tripled. You know? Right. And there are a lot of, I know that because I started Diwali celebration at the Suffolk County first time three years ago. Yeah, the H. Lee Denison uh, building. Right, then H. Lee Denison building where we have about 700 people there the yes. first time. Yes, and when and, I attended. And you, you attended there too, actually. I right? was, yeah. yeah, I was very, very uh, excited to see right. the level of involvement. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what, do you, what is your view on South Asian population? And we also want actually, you know, to have some, you know, South Asian uh, person from South Asian to be in, you know, w as a candidate. Sure, I'd love it. In fact, uh, what, we, what we've done in the past is reach out to various mm -hmm. communities, including a uh, South Asian community, and asking for them to send mm -hmm. people who would be interested in running for office. Because okay. only through the, di the diversity gives us the strength. Right. And when we're able to offer up candidates that are reflective of the population in the town, for example, uh, Tony Martinez, who's mm -hmm. my deputy supervisor, who's elected to the town board, he's the first El Salvadoran. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born in El Salvador, and he continues to serve on the town board. So we've tried to show the diverse population, be reflective of the elected officials or the candidates that we have to offer. So what I would say is uh, I'm, I'm excited about your leadership mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. and what you've brought to my attention and look forward to continuing to work to recruit candidates and and even recruit people who would work behind the scenes um, because a lot of right. times people don't want to be a people candidate yes. a lot of people right. say you're crazy you want to be a right. candidate well right. it takes a certain breed to do that and I'm right. and I've loved doing it but right. a lot of times people want to be um, the assistance behind the scenes on the campaign mm -hmm as well as in government positions once the candidate gets elected. So we're excited about being able to do that. I know Steve is looking forward to continuing to work with you on that on a county-wide level, mm -hmm. which would allow us to uh, recruit people mm -hmm. both uh, up front as mm -hmm. candidates and as well as uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, you control a lot of appointments, obviously, right? So we also really like to increase South Asian uh, on some appointments first, and that will evolve into candidates. Sure, because I mean, they get the they become familiar with exactly, the workings the of the government, the process, right. and right. sure, we're always looking for that. So should I should I contact you with the names or something? Yes, or yeah. If you have if you have names, what I interested. what I always tell people is make sure they have a resume put together right. which right. shows right. what they've right. been involved in, what they've done mm -hmm. in their professional life, mm -hmm. and then that way we can send the resumes mm -hmm. around when people mm -hmm. are looking for membership to various committees and boards and commissions as well as uh, right. positions within the government. Mm -hmm. uh, now, different subject, you know, we're look, talking about national now. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, which you is know, everybody. County to county to nation now. Which everybody's oh, oh. attention should be on. Exactly. So now, we, this year is a really critical election, you mm -hmm. know, President Obama versus Governor Romney. What do you think about uh, Governor Romney's choice of Ron Paul? Ryan Paul. Uh, you know, uh, for of wife, Paul Ryan. Ryan. Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, Sorry. yes. Ron Paul is may be running, <laughs> may not be running, but Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan. Paul yeah, Ryan. no, I think it's an interesting choice because I think Romney felt, I think what it says is Romney felt he needed to inject mm -hmm. a new energy into his campaign. I think he recognized that he was faltering. 
mm -hmm. uh, against mm -hmm. President Obama. I think President Obama was doing well. Mm -hmm. President Obama's message has been clear that he's here to protect the middle class. He's dragging us out of this, uh, what, what, what's one of the worst economic recessions that we've ever experienced in right. our lifetime. Right. Right. And his leadership and, and Vice President Biden's leadership has been dragging us out of that, mm -hmm. uh, of this calamity. Uh, Romney knew he was losing the argument based on his past performance at Bain Capital, his refusal to release his tax returns showed that he's with the rich. Mm -hmm. He wants to protect the rich and he views that that's the way to, uh, to jumpstart the economy is to give mm -hmm. tax cuts to the rich and hopefully it will trickle down to all of us. Mm -hmm. We know that that's not going to be the case because we, we've seen that in the past and it's failed. Mm -hmm. So I think President Obama's won that argument. I think now the choice couldn't be any clearer with Ryan being selected. Ryan's budget looked to decimate all of the programs that protect the middle class. Mm -hmm. And so you have this stark contrast between what President Obama and Vice President Biden have to offer and what they've been trying to do mm -hmm. to protect the middle class. And you've got Governor Romney and, uh, and Congressman Ryan, who's made it clear as to where they stand that they're their plan is to give tax cuts to the rich and that, that hopefully that will trickle down. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'll cut mm -hmm. all of the programs that have been there to protect veterans and students and senior citizens. They want to gut Medicare. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so any senior citizen should be concerned about what they have to offer the American people. So I think the choice is good because it allows us to, to further make the argument as to who's on the side of middle class voters. I think there's a clear difference between the two candidates. So sure. you know, people would have a you know choice either this or this. Right? Absolutely, yeah. There's no, like, you there's know. no, there's no gray here. Right. Right. And I think right. the tea, if you're a Tea Party, right. Uh, very right wing conservative voter, you're going to vote for Governor Romney right. and, and Congressman Ryan. And if you're a middle class voter who's concerned about their economic future, you're going to vote for President Obama and Vice mm -hmm. President Biden. So do you think that economy is going to get better in the next four years? Well, I, I'm not Kreskin. Uh, I'm, I'm only as good as everybody else who around me s is hoping that it will. Um, but I'm hoping that all the things that President Obama is trying to do um, will signal, and again, this is the, I listen to talk radio as much as anybody else does. They signal that they view that going into 2013 and 14, they expect it to get better. So. We're hopeful that it will. What is your future plan? I mean, you, right now you're a supervisor and chairman. My, my future plans has always been, like I said, to do what I do, what I like to do and I love to do is, is, is being in public service. So I don't have any future political plans. I've never mm -hmm. been interested in going higher than a local office. Okay. Um, and so I'm excited to be where I am. Uh, they call me a homebody. Uh, I had an opportunity to run for Congress at one point back in okay. 2000. I, okay. I, it, it wasn't anything that interested me mm -hmm. uh, as part of my public service mm -hmm. plans. And I like staying local because I can see uh, the results of the things that we do here um, mm -hmm. and continue to just make my community a better place. I heard also that you were also, your name was kind of under you know, consideration for New York State Democratic Party. Chairman, yes. Right? In f yeah, in fact, I've been asked several times several to times, accept right? the yeah. position. And I've said no because, again, I like working here locally. Mm -hmm. And I view that not that I don't think I could do the job, but I don't think I would like doing the job. And so what's always important to me, it isn't about the, you, you've got to have an ego to be in this business, but it isn't about the ego for me. It's about whether and I know my limitations. I know what I will like and not like. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I would like being the New York State Democratic Chair personally, okay. just because I don't like to travel a lot and I don't like to take on big things like that. I like to do things that I do locally, mm -hmm. um, which make me happy. And of course, you've always got to be happy doing what you do. And I know you're a very simple and honest person. I mean, yeah, well, I thank really you. I, I know you for several years, and I, I can only say that. And Thank I know, you. Just wanted to ask you, I, will, I have to learn a lot from you, too. So would you be my mentor? Absolutely. Okay. I would be happy Appreciate to it. be your mentor. Appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com. That is rajmitv at gmail.com. Until next time, we'll see you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raj. Thanks for having me.